Now we're given the masses of the two wheels. So this one is two kilograms, and this one is 12.5 kilograms. And we're asked, what's the difference in the tension? So what does that even mean? Right? So what it means is, what's the difference of the tension in the top and the bottom? Remember, for a pulley, whenever we have uh, ropes pulling on a pulley, and the pulley has mass, when you have to actually rotate the disc of the pulley, you have to have different tension on either side. Well, the same thing's happening here, is this disc has a mass, we're accelerating it, so the tension actually has to be different. So let's write T high over here and T low over here. And just to be clear, let's say it's going around, it's going to accelerate that way. It's speeding up as it goes around that way. So that's what it means. What's the difference T high minus T low? Um, another potentially confusing thing about this problem is which disc to work on to figure this out. And the answer is uh, B, because we know everything going on with B. It's just turning on this axis, so it's implied that there's some frictionless bearing there that it can turn around. A also has a motor driving it, right? So A is driven by a motor. We don't know what's going on with the motor. So that's why, in a, in a test, try to be more clear, you're supposed to solve this with this B. Okay? Okay, so what's the difference in tension? Well, the tension is what is driving the motion. We know that T high is what's pulling it in the direction it actually accelerates. T low is actually pulling it the other way. Right? So the force, remember, is when, when a rope or a string comes off of a disc, it pulls tangential. Right? So that's the force of T high, and that's the force of T low pulling on the disc. And you could say, oh, what, why isn't it accelerating? Well, there's a bearing here, it's not like a thing, and that's pushing it back this way. But since that's the axis of rotation, that's not applying it to work. What about gravity? Well, gravity's acting at the center. It's on the axis of rotation, it's not applying it to work. So the only thing that applies a torque in this situation is the belt. All right, so we just have to apply Newton's second law for rotation. And let's see, so this is a case where they're pulling at 90 degrees. You know, whenever you're pulling a wheel with a string, it's always at 90 degrees. So you really just have to ignore the sine theta. It's just sine 90. And let's do the sines, the SIGNs, manually. So it's R, 0.25 meters times the force t high and that's positive because it's making it go counterclockwise or counterclockwise and then we have r again for the lower tension t low and that's pulling it clockwise so that's negative All right and on the other side we have the moment and that's just of the disc we're just considering this one object the disc so 1 half mr squared, m was 12.5 kilograms, r was 0.25 squared, and then we have alpha. Alpha we got from the previous problem, it was 0.64 radians per second squared. So if you didn't watch part A, you've got to do part A. Okay, and if we look at the left side here, you might realize, oh, well, that's the delta t. That's the difference in the tension. We've done this in other problems on the homework, I believe, is where you often don't even think about these as individual forces. You just say it's the difference in the tension. It tells you the net torque. But anyway, you can see it mathematically here. This is equal to 0.25 the radius times T high minus T low. And that's the delta T that we're looking for, the difference in tension. Um, equals all this again, one half. 12.5.25 meters squared, 0.64. So you could make your life a little easier by doing that. Cancel the 0.25, cancel the one on the right. Solve for delta T, it's a half times 12 and a half times 0.25 times 0.64, and this was a complete accident, but that's one. So the answer is one degree for the difference in tension between the two. And now, you want to know how do I get the actual tension? This should just be what happens. Why don't we know the actual tension? Uh, that would get into what's really happening over here with this motor. You know, you could sort of pull this. If this were a little bit elastic, you could pull it hard or not pull it so hard or set it with various absolute tensions. But the, as long as the difference is one, you're going to get this result. So it would depend a little bit on the forces pulling this thing apart. And then as you change the absolute tension, it would kind of change what the motor has to do. 
The absolute tension is, is a different problem. That's why we just asked for the difference in tension. 